for my lover returning to his wife. She is all there. She was carefully melted down for you and cast up from your childhood, cast up from your 100 favorite Aggies. She has always been there, my darling. She is in fact exquisite. Fireworks in the dull middle of February and as real as a cast iron pot. Let's face it, I have been momentary, a luxury. A bright red sloop in the harbor, my hair rising like smoke from the car window. Little neck clams out of season. She is more than that. She is your have to have. Has grown you your practical, your tropical growth. This is not an experiment. She is all harmony. She sees to the oars and oarlocks for the dinghy. Has placed wildflowers at the window at breakfast. Sat by the potter's wheel at midday. Set four, three children on the moon. Three cherubs drawn by Michelangelo. Done this with her legs spread out in the terrible months in the chapel. If you glance up, the children are there. I delicate balloons rising on the ceiling. She has also carried each one down the hall after supper, their heads privately bent. Two legs protesting person to person, her face flushed with a song in their little sleep. I give you back your heart. I give you permission. For the fuse inside her throbbing angrily in the dirt. For the bitch in her and the burying of her wound. For the burying of her small red wound alive. For the pale flickering flare under her ribs. For the drunken sailor who waits in her left pulse. For the mother's knee the stockings, for the garter belt, for the call, the curious call. When you will burrow in arms and breasts and tug at the orange ribbon in her hair and answer the call, the curious call. She is so naked and singular. She is the sum of yourself and your dream. Climb her like a monument, step after step, she is solid. As for me, I am a watercolor. I wash off. One reviewer who praises Anne Sexton's poetry has noted, quote, Whenever Anne Sexton's poems are mentioned, the term confessional poetry is not far behind. It has always seemed a silly and unilluminating term to me. The term confessional seems to imply that anyone who spilled her guts would be a poet. Sexton also often denigrated the term, but at times she applied it to herself. She once told an interviewer that, quote, For years I've railed against being put in this category. Then I decided I was a confessional poet. If anything influenced me, it was W.D. Snodgrass's Heart's Needle. It changed me, and undoubtedly it must have influenced my poetry. At the same time, everyone said, You can't write this way. It's too personal. It's confessional. You can't write this, Anne. And everyone was discouraging me. But when I saw Snodgrass doing what I was doing, it kind of gave me permission. Anne Sexton was born in 1928 in Newton, Massachusetts, into an upper-middle-class family with literary aspirations. Despite struggling with academic success, she excelled in poetry and other creative pursuits. At the age of 19, she eloped with Alfred K.O. Sexton II, and they lived an unstable life, with Anne suffering from deep depression and being hospitalized from time to time. It was at the advice of a therapist in 1957 that she began seriously to write poetry and enrolled in a writing course. Anne Sexton began work with Robert Lowell in his workshops at Boston University, and her first book, To Bedlam and Partway Back, 
was published in 1960, followed by All My Pretty Ones in 1962. Then in 1966, she won a Pulitzer Prize for her collection, Live or Die. Sexton's personal life was restless and sometimes her depression reoccurred. She continued to write poetry that grew more religious and mythic, but some critics found it less effective. After her suicide in 1974, several posthumous collections of her work were published, including the complete poems and Anne Sexton, A Self-Portrait in Letters. Sexton wrote important essays about poetry and made insightful comments in interviews, and her work is known for incisive metaphor and unexpected rhythmic patterns. Sexton tried to bring the forces of music and poetry together with a chamber rock outfit dubbed Anne Sexton and Her Kind. Her daughter remembers this about it. Quote, music, 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 how my mother loved music of all sorts, even though she couldn't carry a tune and never played an instrument. In 1967, while she taught creative writing at a neighboring high school, she and a fellow teacher founded a rock group called Anne Sexton and Her Kind, named after one of her signature poems from her first book, To Bedlam and Partway Back. The band, consisting of a guitar, reeds, and woodwinds, keyboard, double bass, horns, percussion, and kazoo, backed up by my mother, who read the lyrics out loud, Lyrics were, which were, in fact, readings of her poetry. So here, take a listen to Anne Sexton and her kind. Your midriff sags toward your knees. Your breasts lie down in air. Their nipples as uninvolved as warm starfish. You stand in your elastic case, still not giving up the newborn and the oldborn. and border as your belly soft as pudding slops into the empty space down over the surgeon's careful mark down over hips those head cushions Mouth cushions, slow motion, like a rolling pin. Over crisp hairs, that amazing feel that hides your genius from your patron. Over thighs, thick as young pigs. Over knees like saucers, over calves, polished as leather, down toward the feet. You pause for a moment, tying your ankles into knots. City from the sea, born 
long before Alexandria, straightway from God, you have come into your redeeming skin.